if you haven't had a chance to get an effective decentralization program in place, so um, if you're just looking for solutions as fireworks uh, season approaches, um, and you think things like the, the dens that we talked about aren't going to be effective enough for your dog, then a lot of people will come asking about sedatives and how they can sedate their dog. Now, um, little Dexter here, and this will be his first experience of fireworks, so I don't think he'll have too much of a problem, so he won't need any sedatives, but a lot of people will come in uh, and ask about them. Now, there are a couple of different categories of sedatives, some of which we, we would say recommend and some that we wouldn't. Um, in most cases, the vet will need to see the animal, so it's not just a case of you can um, you know, pop in and ask for the sedatives without being seen because some of them do have some quite nasty side effects, things like lowering the blood pressure, affecting the heart and things like that. So you need to know that you're dealing with a healthy animal when you're prescribing them. So don't be surprised if the vet asks to see the animal, especially if they haven't been in any time soon. Now the, the kind of lowest level category of sedative that you can give uh, and one that perhaps you wouldn't need to see the vet for would be something like one of the natural ones. So things like Skullcap and Valerium or there are some other capsules that are designed on, on a product that's found in, in the milk um, and they can be very effective at reducing stress but it has to be one of the lower level stresses um, that you've got. So if you've got a really wound up animal, they, they might only just take the edge off it or they might do nothing at all. But that's the first step that, that perhaps is worth a go. Uh, and you want to be starting all of these sedatives in the run up to fireworks night, because obviously people tend to start letting them off um, more than just on the night itself. So I would start probably two weeks beforehand with these things. But if you've left it too late, then, then you know, as soon as possible. The other two categories that we use, one is a, a drug called acepromazine, which was the old sedative that we used to use all the time. Um, and, and that's something that some vets will still use, some clients will still ask for. But the other category that we try and use is, is uh, benzodiazepines, so things like diazepam um, or your um, Valium type tablets. Um, now, the ACP, the old school tablets that we use, seem to be hugely effective and clients were already, you know, were all very impressed with how they worked uh, and they'd come back year after year uh, and ask for them again and again because they thought they were working really well but kind of evidence shows that actually rather than doing anything for the fear all they're doing is really knocking the dog out so they're absolutely zonked the trouble is new evidence shows that although the animal is completely zonked and, and knocked out it doesn't do anything for the brain activity of the dog and actually they're acutely aware of what's going on around them and they can still hear all the noise and see all the lights from the fireworks but they can't do anything about it they can't move their legs they can't run away and it's thought that actually this is going to make them more fearful and, and the next year the problem's going to be twice as bad because they couldn't do anything about it the year before so actually it's been shown to make them worse so we really don't give acp um, at all unless it's in combination perhaps with one of the other drugs in a really severely affected dog but generally we try and shy away from that drug as much as possible and actually we tend to use the benzodiazepine drugs, so things like your Valium, um, because what they do, although they don't knock the dog out as much, they won't seem as still, seem as sleepy, they actually get in the way of preventing the fear from coming. So they, they get rid of and relieve anxiety and make the dog generally less stressed. So that's obviously what we're trying to do, what we're trying to achieve with our drugs, not making the problem worse. So that would be what we recommend here at the clinic. And, and if you go and see your vet, they might recommend the same thing. And that would be why.